against a zone, we also practice five different screens against a typical zone to give them a different look. Here we are lined it up, our one, two, and three man, our four and five man down low. Plays number one, two, three, and four start with our pass to the left. On play number one, number the number one man is going to be getting the shot. Play number two, two man's going to be getting the shot. Play number three, the three man's going to be getting the shot. And even play number four, it's possible that the four man will get a shot. So let's take a look at this. Play number one, one man delivers the ball to the two. As that ball goes, and this is a, a pre-call, we're calling number one, this man cuts here and sets a low block screen along with the five and cuts down here. Three man breaks across, pass here, and we just continue the pass as shown. This is play number one. Play number two, again, starts with a pass to the left to the two man. The four man again breaks to the low block, creates a double screen with the five man. The two man passes back to the one and breaks around that double screen. One man passes the ball to the three, three passes it on to the two for the shot. Play number three is going to end up with the three man taking the shot. We'll start off again with a pass from the one man to the left side to the two man. Four man will again break over beside the five man to create the double screen on the low block. The two man will pass back to the one man. The one man can begin a dribble as this action is going on, the three man has gone to the baseline looking for the pass and the shot. Play number four potentially involves the four man, so he'll take a little different path this time. The play starts off again with the pass to the left. And the one man will now go set a screen or the two man. The two man will initiate a dribble, a hard dribble, looking for a shot in this area here, hoping to draw the defense to him. The three man will possibly be open for a shot here. Four man comes in and sets up a block on the center here in the middle of the zone. If this man comes up to try to play defense, then this is where the four man can get a pass from the three man. This is play number four. Play number five looks a little bit more like we're running our regular zone offense in that we initiate our typical pass to the three man and the four man breaks up to the elbow. Instead of passing the ball here, we pass the ball back and reverse the ball back to the weak side. When the ball goes back to the weak side, we reverse it back and the three man comes down, sets a pick here, five man comes around, and we get the ball into the five man here. So if we've got a good shooting five man, that gives him a good opportunity to score against the zone. Play number five. Teams that want to come at us playing a 1-3-1 defense, we want to counter that through a special offense that's lined up 2-1-2. So in essence, we just want to have our two guards out front, our center at the free throw line, and our two forwards around the block. Our guard wants to penetrate like normal. Look at making this type of pass or hitting the center here, or reversing the ball back to the other guard. Against a 1-3-1, one, one, 
are going to have this type of pressure. So you may be dribbling into the double team. We need to make a good pass here, a good pass here. If you do make the pass here, we can make the pass right back again, or again, we can hit the center. Uh, once the pass goes to a forward, then the other forward comes across. So let's imagine that this pass is made here. This forward comes across for the pass here, and the center drops down behind. So this is the action that we have on either side. So we're playing these triangles against a 1-3-1, moving the ball, and going and driving the gaps with, uh, with the action of the ball. So we want to counter the 1-3-1 one, one defense, zone defense, with a 2-1-2 two, two offense. There are going to be special situations where we'd like to be able to score with just a few seconds left on the clock. This is generally as the clock is running down uh, at the end of a time period such as a quarter or the half or the game. Typically there's 10, 11, 12 seconds left as we're throwing the ball in and bounds or getting, getting the rebound. So we're bringing the ball down the court. We don't have a lot of time to throw the ball around. We want everybody on the same page on what we're doing. So on this particular one, to give the uh, defense a different look, we're going to take the forwards who are up at the free throw line extended and put them down at the baseline. The guard has the option of going dribbling hard to the right or dribbling hard to the left. If he dribbles hard to the right, we call this chop. So chop is a hard dribble towards the forward here. As the forward sees this, he times it so that he's going to do a ball exchange with that guard. This center will also try to set a pick on that forward's man as he comes around, and he'll roll to the basket. This guard is going to fan, this forward's going to fan here. So as we come around for the shot, hopefully for the layup, hopefully for this, we may need three. So here's the pass here, here's the pass here, or he could fan out here and get a three, or he's got a layup, or he's got the drop off to the center. So we have all kinds of options on what we call the standard chop play. This time we're going to go to the left, and the center, his rule of thumb against man is to play on the elbow on the ball side. So now we're going left here. So the guard's going to penetrate in this area here. This guard's going to come here, and we're going to reverse the ball back. We're going to reverse the ball here. This man's coming here, and this man is breaking here. So that's a pass for the potential three. Once this pass is made here, this man sets a screen as if he's going to come out here and get this pass. But what's going to happen is the forward's going to break up here and he's going to break down here. So we have the potential pass here. So our designation for this play is called hammer. It's a special play that we use at the end of a time period, usually with 10 or 12 seconds left to go, uh, that we initiate that, we call out hammer. If it goes to the right, we're gonna run chop. If it goes to the left, we're gonna run hammer. Good way to get a last second shot, hammer. Next, we're gonna talk about our baseline out of bounds plays. Our baseline out-of-bounds plays are designed with two things in mind. One, to potentially get a score, and two, to safely get the ball in bounds. So one option is just to safely get the ball in bounds and go into our regular offense, whether it be against a man or a zone. But the second option, of course, is to use that play to score. So here's play number one. Play number one.
we line up with our two forwards on the block and our two guards free throw line extended and here our center is going to be taking the ball out of bounds so most of the time we want our center taking the ball out of bounds certainly on play number one center takes the ball out of bounds so when he slaps the ball the guard on the opposite side is going to break to try to get the ball here he breaks here so we try to get the ball into this guard right here these two are going to pinch down and this guard is going to circle back around for the pass and shot right there again if he's open that's a good play for an easy basket if he's not he's going to bring the ball out to get into our offense this is play number one Here we are set up for out of bounds play number two along the baseline. Our center takes the ball out of bounds, slaps the ball, and this time the guards are going to do a crossing action, but this guard is going to come right here, right here, and we get the ball in. This man's going to step in, this man's going to step in, and our center is going to come around, and we're looking for that action from our center. Again, if we can get the ball in there for the easy shot, that's what we'll do. If not, if this man doesn't elect to shoot, we bring it back out and start into our offense. Baseline, out of bounds play number two. Again, we're set up as if we're running either play number one or play number two. This one's going to be play number three. Play, play number three is a simple up screen on the guard. The guard cuts out here and the forward rolls. So those are the typical two options that we have. On the weak side, we have these players exchange. If the guard elects to bring the ball back out, this guard's going to come back out. That forward's going to go down. We're right into our offense. So that's play number three. For our baseline out of bounds play, play number four, we set up exactly the same with our center taking the ball out of bounds, our two forwards on the baseline, two guards around the free throw line there, the elbows. This time we're just going to have the forwards cross and we try to get the ball in. This guard will also cross here and we get the ball in there for the shot. Again, we're trying to get the ball safely in bounds. If it pops open, we get a two. If not, we back it back out and run our offense. Out of bounds play number four. <clears throat> On all of our out of bounds plays, we have the center take the ball out of bounds under the basket, except for baseline out of bounds play number five. On play number five, we have a good shooter take the ball out of bounds. In this case, it's one of our guards. So in effect, we have the guard and the center change places. When the guard slaps the ball, the opposite guard breaks as if it's play number one. This forward breaks as if it's play number three. It sets on the block here. The center breaks out and takes the pass from the guard. On that pass, he breaks here and we try to make this pass for the shot on baseline out-of-bounds play number five. 